There's a delay. Hold on one second. Uh, I think we're good. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, phew. right. So right. sorry. No, it's great. It's watch me work. It's Thursday, which is um, the new Friday. <laughs> and we're here. Uh, we've been doing watch me work for 11 years. And um, we want to thank the public theater for supporting us in those 11 years. And we also want to thank Hal Round, who came on a few years ago to help us live stream from the lobby of the public theater, where we usually hold this. And then also recently to help us create this beautiful mosaic, this beautiful community uh, and during these challenging times. Um, what we do, for those of you who don't know, I'm looking around because, ah, oh, my timer is on my window, so I'll have to go and get it. What we do is we work for 20 minutes and then we talk with you about your work and your creative process. It's as simple as that. And the, the, uh, the idea is that we get some work done and we talk a little bit about the process to keep you going encourage you along um, and uh, if you have any questions during that time during the during the question time Audrey's going to tell you how to get in touch I probably forgot something but it's okay I think you got it go Thank you. Great. please yeah I'm gonna go get my timer you get your timer amazing so if you have any questions uh, and you're inside of the zoom all you need to do is click on the raise your hand button in the participant tab likely on the bottom of your screen on a laptop or the top if you're on a tablet or an ipad um, and if you have a question and you're watching on howlround.tv you can actually tweet at us at, at watch me work slp with the hashtag howlround h-o-w-l-r-o-u-n-d or tweet at public theater ny or message us on our instagram that's it that's it. So um, it's really simple. All we're going to do is work and you can do any kind of work. It doesn't have to be writing work. Um, it can be any kind of work you feel like doing. And then we will talk with you about your process um, after we're after the 20 minutes has passed. Here we go. Are we ready? Uh...
did it. Hey. No effort is ever wasted. No effort is ever <laughs> wasted. Uh, anybody have any questions? I know well, that it's always good to, for me to remember that anyway. Uh, it's, yeah, from yeah. the Bhagavad Gita and I'm sure other places yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Do we have no questions? Yeah. I, I don't no, see any don't. hands up quite yet. Okay. Oh, I see one. Like, All right. <laughs> I always oh, get comfortable. Got more. Let's just sit in silence. <laughs> Ah, cool. All right. <laughs> All right. Up first, we've got Vernita. Are you with us? Are you okay? Hi. Hey, Vernita. Yeah. How are you? I'm well. Hi, SLP. Hi, Audrey. Hey. Everyone. Um, yeah, I so, said, okay, I'll take the opportunity to jump in here. Um, I'm really grateful to be here today. And mm -hmm. um, I missed logging in and on time. For Tuesday, but I was listening to the live stream um, and heard the conversation around anger. And mm. um, so I am very emotionally activated after the last, you know, 72 hours or so. And this is a question I would have asked yesterday too. But um, mm -hmm. I started writing. Um, I have about uh, a thousand words. Um, will rewrite, but I'm finding that I'm like so emotionally activated about these current events. I want to write a piece that gives a positive framework um, that contributes to a broader narrative change around black men and boys um, in this country. But like all that keeps coming out is like how angry and devastated I feel right now. And I don't know if that means like that's just what I meant to write or keep writing until the positive framework emerges or, you know, put it all aside and maybe come back next week when I can, you know, put a collective coherent concept together. Um, so any thoughts around um, how to channel um, that energy when it's feels so elevated and active, it's kind of hard to focus in a way, um, other than like what I really just feel right in front of me right now. I love your question. It's good to see you again. I'm happy you're here. I'm happy you all are here. Yeah. I love your question. I love your question. Um, uh, it's, it's a great question and it has a, a big answer. Um, one is um, cultural, maybe more culturally specific. And this is again, just me talking. So it's not, you know, I know in this country or all over the world, uh, we have a, um, a model of one person of color standing for all people of color, but I'm just reminding everybody that it's just me talking. Uh, this is just my opinion. So I think, Renita, um, as I have also, you know, with all of us been living through the recent events, uh, it reminds me how we, um, how to say, Black people um, specifically, and this is not people of color, but it's people of African descent in America are not allowed simple emotions often like anger. We, do, we are not allowed simple emotions like anger. And we, if you're feeling anger right now, to my mind, that's okay. And if you're writing from an angry place, I hear you want to get it into a positive narrative framework and all that beautiful stuff. But so often we are not allowed anger. We don't allow, um, we're not, society doesn't allow us anger. Society doesn't even allow us to say things like, could you put your dog on a leash, please? Okay. Society doesn't allow us anger. And we have internalized that to the extent that we, if we want to, if we feel like I got to keep my job, I got to keep my situation, you know what I mean? I got to smile. Um, I've done it a million times, smiled, because I didn't want people to think I was, you know, dangerous at me, dangerous, you know what I'm saying? But so brothers out there, and I know brothers out there deal with it perhaps more than, than, than sisters do, than women do, you know, okay? But I'm, so, so this, that's a cultural 
culturally specific answer. I feel like if you feel anger right now, I think it's perfectly valid. And I think one of the problems is that this country does not allow us to feel pretty much anything except something that's going to be pleasing to their bank accounts. And anything that happens, it can be perverted and twisted in such a way that makes us look as if we are less than anything, any way it goes down. Okay. So I think that in the privacy of your own home, in your own thoughts, on your page that is private now and that will one day hopefully go public, maybe even at the public, um, I believe that if you are feeling anger, Vernita, or anybody out there, regardless of your color or background or whatever, we talked to the, the uh, person we were talking to on Tuesday, from what I could see, did not present as a, as a POC, okay? But I, I couldn't tell. These screens are very small. Um, okay, but if you're feeling anger, I think anger is, 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 is okay. Also, if you're not feeling anger, that's okay too. You know what I mean? I'm not telling anybody to feel a certain thing. If the anger turns into something else, great. If it doesn't, Vernita, that's okay too. Um, we, uh, again, we're, we're not allowed to feel, so, I mean, I mean, uh, the idea that people can uh, go to a governor's house with guns and demand the right to get a haircut and yet a brother can't just, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? Or a, or a sister or a person. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are right now. And I feel like um, it's, it's okay to get angry about that or whatever you want to get angry about. Actually, that's my opinion. Um, and bless your heart that you want to turn it into something positive along the way. That is, that is, the, that is, that is the African American experience, really. I mean, really, can you imagine if, if black people were as angry as we should be? It's not about a haircut. You know what I'm saying? We're not even allowed to be angry about, you know, we have to hold it together because if we don't hold it together, we'll be seen as bad and we'll be jailed. And I'll get off that soapbox because you've heard it a hundred times already. Right. Okay. No, no, that, that I mean, it is, it is doing, Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, no, oh. it is helpful. I definitely relate to the not being able or like not being allowed to feel that feelings. I'll tell you, I'm missing my car right now. So I can just like go in my car and scream without a neighbor mm. <laughs> in another apartment, you know, wondering what's going on. Um, and I think this particular story with uh, George Floyd, for whatever reason, it just hit me that it was it was juxtaposed to um, my brother's birthday, and it was almost like mm. seeing a split screen on the left side. Mm. You know, I have this image of the officer with his knee in this man's neck, and then to the right, it's like my family's having this celebratory Zoom. Um, and, you know, I guess the positive framework I'm trying to get to is to be able to highlight and uplift and give reinforcement that our Black men are loved, are doing well, our fathers, our husbands, our, you know, community builders who have a right to be here. Yeah, I, I know. Um, and from experience in, um, when, you know, when, when people want something, when people want a big job done that they think cannot be done, that involves perhaps some difficult shit, they call me. I channel a lot of shit. I can run la la. I got a big bandwidth for bullshit and anger and all that kind of stuff. And I'm saying to you, one artist to another, run the ang let it run, let it run. And the thing that beautiful space, your place thing you're looking for to share is there. But if you don't let the anger run, it's not gonna come. And we won't feel it in your work because we'll feel that you, that before the anger even got out, you were trying to make a cake that everybody would enjoy. You know what I'm saying? You got to let those feelings run. And this is regard, whatever you're writing. You know, if you're writing about what's going on in Brazil right now, if you're writing about what's going on 
uh, anything, the Holocaust, whatever, could be something that happened, you know, I mean, the, the Holocaust, World War II shit, right? It, it doesn't have to be something that's happening right now, but anything we're writing about, you got to let that anger run, or you got to let the feelings flow, whatever those feelings are. Right now, for you, right now, today, they're anger, and, and a desire to find that, that place. So, so, so yeah, don't, don't, I mean, I would suggest that you allow yourself to be free, Vernita. I was about to say, don't police yourself, but that's a don't. Instead, I'm going to turn it into just an affirmation. I am free. I am free. I am free. Now, what you going to do? I'm going to write. Yes. Good answer. Bingo. Thank right. you. Thank you, Vernita. Good question. Thank you. Great question. Um, all right. Thank you. The next person is John. John, are you with us? Yeah, I'm right here. Hi, hey, John. I see you. Hi. How are you? I'm well. Um, Happy to see thank you. you for, <laughs> thank you for having this forum. Um, mm -hmm. I do have a question. It's about writing scripts. Um, mm -hmm. I. I'm not a playwright myself, but I'm an interpreter and a translator, and I have 20 some years of experience of working in courts, hospitals, with uh, immigrants, people who are uneducated, um, people that certainly the complete opposite of my experience. And uh, I've done the, um, I'm doing what you're telling me to do, I take notes, I write cards to people every day, I'm reading poetry again, and I'm tapping into this literature that I studied for years to get me where I am right now, which is speaking in two languages. So my question is this, because of you and, and you know, you do these script things and I read your play, I incorporated a script of, of whatever it was into my last blog piece. So my question is, where do I go for guidance about writing scripts? Because I have, it's a, I just instinctively did it, but I don't know if there's, you know, uh, something I should follow, some type of things I should do to make a script really pop off the page. Because I, I hear these scripts all the time. I, I say them in two languages, but is there anything that I need to do when I'm writing a script, incorporating it into uh, a piece I'm writing, like a blog post or something, that uh, to make it sound cleaner, make it sound more real? Because I can't, I, in a sense, I can't say exactly what I've heard people say because that's the trust that they have of working with interpreters. It's all confidential, but how can I incorporate actually what happens in a, in a, in a script in, that I can include in my writing piece, if that makes any sense? So let me, uh, uh, I wanna make sure I understood you, um, that you're a, a translator, you're working with people who are entrusting you with their stories, is that? appropriate i mean i just want yeah. to call. okay and you want to you feel moved to include aspects of those stories in your own work is that correct yes yes i'm just, I'm just want, making sure that i understand because you're using the word scripts and i just want to make sure so you you hear stories from folks and you feel moved to include well i mean you could so you, but you don't want to include it like a a documentary kind of thing it's not going to be like uh so-and-so that I met yesterday, Mr. So-and-so that I met yesterday said this, and this is sort of his story, like a journalism piece. You don't want that. You want it to, to sort of, it to move from the factual and the person you know into sort of, into fiction or dramatic fiction, dramatic literature. Is that correct? That's it, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would, I mean, if you can do things like, respectfully that's the first word <laughs> respectfully because it is someone you know and met and has as you say has a trust in you um start creating characters so you have the person mr or miss miss beauty let's just say miss beautiful right and she's told you something and start creating a character based on them and think about most all the writers that we, we love you know think about like I don't know Charles Dickens and you read about Charles Dickens life and how he went through this and that and the other and then you read about the care you read his novels and you read the characters in his in his novels and you think wow you know these are based on people but they're not the people 
So your character isn't Miss Beauty as she appeared to you in that actual situation. She is somebody else with a different set of circumstances and different desires. Start stepping away from the character and imagine maybe Miss Beauty, imagine these people that you spoke with and have interviewed as pe members of your family. You love them and respect them that much. Um, it's a tricky territory. I keep using the word respect because a lot of times we, one might have a tendency to use these people, you know, like, like, a, mine, like a mine owner in South Africa might send the, those people who are less educated down into the mines to gather things, bring up, and then they can be appropriated. And I know I've heard many conversations about it. In America, we could all appropriate each other's stuff, but it's all free for all. And there are writers who have said this, and I've heard them say it in live, you know, uh, you know, like on, they're on stage and I'm in the audience and I have to hold the chair to sit down because I don't want to shout from the audience and scream, no, the playing field is not equal. And often the people who appropriate for profit, it's not a level playing field, are people who are not POC people, who are people who are educated, for example, and people who are, I'll just say, white folks. That's what often happens. Um, that's a historical fact. That's just information, you know? So if you're working with people who you have said are less educated and maybe POC, you gotta be really, you gotta have your respect, your respect in spades. And that is intentionally said. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we can't get into just taken, okay? So, so as much as you can't think of them as your family, as much as you can't step away from the character, allow the, the person you met, I'm sorry, the character, step into character, allow the person you met to be a springboard, like a character that, a, a person that Dickens, Charles Dickens might have met, and then be it build like a mofo from there to have, so at the end of the, in your piece, you have a character, not just what that person said, which is sounds like what you want to try to go for, right? That's exactly it. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Sounds like it's going to be a great project. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, John. Um, all right, up next we've got Andrea or Andrea. I'm sorry that I don't know. Are you there, Andrea? Oh, hold on one second. Oh, there you should be unmuted. Can you hear us? It me? Sorry, my connection. Yes, 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 it's you. Sorry, my connection is pretty poor. Um, All good. I kind of wanted to go off of um, Vernita's beautiful question. Um, a few weeks ago, I finished class, Susan Laurie, and I had a class with Oscar Eustace, and we talked about your, your play cycle, Father's Father Comes Home From War. And... Um, he talked about in that time in the development and the writing of that play, what happened that now we see continuing, you know, with Trayvon Martin, um, almost as not the beginning, but what really propelled the Black Lives Matter movement forward and, and your response to that and how it impacted what you were doing at the time. And just as I was that, that last day of that class, I had just, finished the play. And then the very next day was the first time we had seen the footage of Ahmaud Arbery. Um, and so I'm, I'm sitting on this play that feels just too real. And it feels like it's hitting the nail on the head. I've spent so much time working on it, so much time developing it. And now I'm just sitting <laughs> and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily stuck, but I'm just trying to read the moment and, and read the room, you know, and see when is the right time. Um, and I was wondering if you had any mm -hmm. advice, thoughts about what to do when you have the play, but when is when is the moment for it to be to be read and shared and especially when it's when it's happening? Mm -hmm. Well, I would Okay, so what's your ideal situation now? I mean, what's funny about this moment, we're kind of all on a kind of hiatus. 
So would you want to um, invite your friends on a Zoom call and read it that way? I mean, what, 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 were you, what are you hoping to, to do? Unmute, unmute yourself. There you go. All right. Oh, uh, hold on. Let's see. Ah, there you go. Okay. Um, yeah, I've been thinking about doing readings. I just like, I'm really trying to avoid being triggering, especially for, for Black actors, like asking them to. Um, I, I have a whole, I'm sorry. I, I never, I try not to talk while people are talking, but triggering. Um, <laughs> That's a, that's a concept that's relatively new. I kind of feel like it's like new math. My son does new, when we homeschool him, he does new math. They're teaching all these strategies for addition because why I asked the teacher, because basic addition is too hard. Oh, it's too hard. Guess what, girlfriend? Like life is hard. Maybe, you know, some brothers and sisters I, I, I need to be, Trigger what? Because what? 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 You watch the news. You don't want to be triggered. Triggered what? Reminded that the world is difficult. Um, I'm sorry. That's a whole thing. I would, if you're worried about triggering people, put the play away, write something else. Okay. I mean, tr triggering people, what we're supposed to make things easy now for people so they won't get their feelings hurt right? Mm -hmm. Floyd's on the street with a man, a, a, a cop's knee in his neck. He's dying. He does not use a contraction. He says, I cannot breathe. You know, when you say you, you make a conscious choice not to use a contraction because you don't want to sound like you don't know nothing and you want to be heard, I cannot breathe, man. I say, like I said to Renee, you know, let us not let us worry less about triggering people. That's again, that's my opinion. Okay, on this specific subject. So we get some folks in a room and they're triggered. Maybe feelings will be felt. You know, maybe feelings will be felt. Are we trying to keep each other from feeling feelings? To my mind, that's why the art scene, including theater, film, TV, visual, is so often so fucking lame these days because we don't want to make anybody really feel anything. We want to make people think of things. I was reading uh, one of my favorite uh, writers today um, and also a, a writer who happens to be my mentor. I have a mentor, James Baldwin. And we have James Baldwin, you only need one mentor. And he says, when you're pessimistic, it's because life has the, the the idea of life has become academic yes everybody let's crawl up into our heads and not get triggered right so we can just think about it and it can be an intellectual exercise so if your play triggers people i don't think that's a bad thing andrea mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you're hitting it on the head and it's too fresh for you, or you won't be able to really deal with it and get a good rewrite and all that out of it, then pause for a couple of weeks, put it away, write something else, work on something else and bring it out when you can get a little bit of perspective. But I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I, I react to that, that phrase that the idea that we're supposed to soft pedal this shit mm -hmm. and not hurt anybody's feelings. It's very different from other situations, you know, where people have gone through domestic violence or physical violence or whatever, and they, they are managing a lot of things. But this is, this is not that. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I think we, you know, getting triggered uh, in this situation is not something we should avoid. Whose feelings are we trying to protect? Mm. Yours? Mine? You know, a, a, a brother out there? You know, right? I mean, I get, I mean, talk about getting triggered. I get triggered when people do shitty writing because they didn't go for it. I'm like, yeah, all right. So I'm here to encourage, let us go for it together, right? Okay. 
if it feels too fresh right now and you don't want to be like hitting the nail on the head, give yourself a few weeks. Right. That's a fair thing. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. It will, uh, hopefully, it will always be triggering. Hopefully, it'll always make people feel something, rage, confusion, despair, fear, anxiety, you know? Yeah. I hear you. Thanks. I talked a long, t a long time about that, but you know, that's a subject I feel very strongly about this. Like we have to like make everything nice and palpable because what we're actually saying is we have to make it marketable. Mm. Marketable. That's what we're saying. Really? We got to have people leaving the theater going, yeah, hooray. I could laugh at that. I saw a play about racism and I laughed. <laughs> I felt good at the end of it. I felt okay. For example, instead of I feel fucked the fuck, I feel fucked up. I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do now. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. You're feeling things. Good, good, good. Or whatever subject you want to write about. It's not just racism. Jesus. <laughs> Thanks, okay. Toppy. Thank you. I know. She's ranting today. It's ranting. I thought I wish it were Wednesday. Ranting Wednesday. Ranting, <laughs> Wednesday. ranting, <laughs> ranting Thursday. I'll rant today. Okay. That's what we're here for. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, we got about 10 minutes left. Um, and we will go to MC. MC, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you Hi. see me? Yeah. Oh. Can we can see you? Hello. Hey, hello. Thank you so much for everything, everyone. Um, I wanted to go back to the what you were talking about. The idea of, I, I love that as writers, we're free to go into different characters to create characters that are anything from, with lives so different than our mm -hmm. own. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm very aware, you know, about what you were saying about respect. Respect for people and situations and cultures that I wasn't born into. So I'm working on something that's said in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. There's a Chinese immigrant, mm -hmm. there's an African-American musician, and there's uh, another character, a, a white character from the South. And when I brought this up with some friends, you know, as the daughter of immigrants, you know, they really liked that I could inhabit this, this Chinese immigrant character. I had a legitimate, um, I was allowed and uh, they trusted what I was saying. But when I tried to, I was experimenting, well, what if I go into the point of view of this African-American real life character, a musician who found himself in Shanghai in the 1930s. Then I got, oh, be careful. You know, and there, no, and and I want to be sensitive. And then, of course, I'm not a white man from the south, but I'm putting my characters together in a room, and I want to feel the freedom and the exhilaration. You know, when I saw I saw your play, Father Comes Home from the Wars, a, a couple times, and it moved me so much. You know, and clearly. You know, I want to be able to write from the perspective of a dog too and get into the dog's head. But I also want to show respect and care and sensitivity. Your thoughts, please. Uh, yeah, um, I, uh, just a question, MC. Did they, did they have pause when you talked about being the white male, I'm guessing, Southerner? The white Southerner person? Yes, uh, less. Okay. But no, no, it was just, well, I didn't write that characters fully. Uh -huh. okay. So, I, you know, okay. so right. But okay. it was really the exchange between the Chinese immigrant and the mm -hmm. African American musician and mm -hmm. their, their worlds they've never, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that, this, is, this is a great question and it's respect. And I don't know, I don't. I'm not a Latin scholar. I don't know what actually the word respect means. Like if I had an Oxford English dictionary, I'd be able to flip through it right now. Maybe someone has one and they can 
uh, they can tell me or I'll look it up later on my phone. Um, but the, the, the notion that you, you, you got to go there. And this is a skill. This is a craft skill thing. You know, you can't, you, you don't want to just slap a care. I mean, it doesn't sound like you're doing this at all from what you're telling me. And I can, I can tell that by the, um, cause I have little ways to, you know, the, the, <laughs> well, the, the sound of your voice conveys a certain kind of feeling, even over this contraption, the sound of your voice conveys a feeling um, that it is somewhere where you want to go. You got to go there. You know what I mean? It's the same if, if, if when I write characters who, are I, who I was not you know, born into, I got to really leave myself and go into them. You have to be willing to leave yourself behind. You also have to ask yourself, am I doing, I mean, this, or maybe you should ask yourself this first. Am I doing this for money? Do I think this is going to be, again, marketability? No. Where, no, I'm not suggesting you are. Right, I'm just right. saying this is a question that we ask ourselves. Why am yeah. I? Am I doing this to, because I think it's going to be the next hot, you know what I mean? Or is this a story that I'm like so moved to tell, you know? So you've got to be willing to leave yourself behind. Maybe you'll never come back. I don't know. But you have to leave yourself behind and do more than walk around in their shoes. Um, I, I, I don't know the, the, the words for it, but you have to take yourself out of yourself and enter the big self, which is where you have access to these people and creatures who are, who don't look like you, you know, so it's a, it's a practice. It's a big practice. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. And just the mechanics when I'm writing it down. So my, my Chinese character speaks, he's just learning the language. So he speaks. Which in language? Which English. language? You see, there's nothing for granted here. Go right. on. So when I write it down, because I'm writing in English, okay. I'm writing it down the way I hear him speaking, which is in broken English and at mm -hmm. times pitched. Mm -hmm. Now, um, of course, that can, and I'm so glad you brought up how you feel about triggering, because that was the other part of my question, but mm -hmm. you answered it really, mm -hmm. your thoughts. Um, but so if I write from this, and I'm also writing from the perspective of, you know, the 1930s and the way people talked to each other was different and, and in some ways, or maybe the slang they used or things that were considered, like if I have them hurling epitaphs at each other, I'm not, but if mm -hmm. I did, is that being insensitive and not showing respect? I mean, I've, well, I've said well, no, no, it's, it's, it sounds like it's something that might happen in a scene if they start doing some name calling. Yeah, that uh, they see your language, they start doing some name calling. It is an exchange. Yes. Comes yeah. out of the scene, perhaps. I mean, I don't know if, you know, it, you know, so that sounds like it's, it's kind of part of the scene. But yes. you, you, you started to going down a road and then you stopped and then you went down this other road. Your character, your your Chinese character, right, is learning English and he speaks, he, correct? Yes. Yeah, speaks what you said is a broken English, sometimes a pigeon. And yes. then you said, and I am writing for, and then you stopped and went down another road. And I, so my course, other, I can, I can guess what you wanted to say, but I'm not going to. Yeah. So, and then, and then of course, it's the Southern character who's hurling these and the, the Chinese character doesn't even know what it means. But then, you know what I'm trying to convey and I, I can't, uh, but I wanna be sensitive and respectful without um, taking away the sort of our freedom to create. How, 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 does, the, how does the character of African descent speak? You approach that question, you didn't ask it. Well, actually, since he's a real life figure, I looked at his memoir. So I've taken things directly from how he speaks. Mm -hmm. And he was born in Kansas City. He speak, you mean you take, you took things directly from how he wrote them down? Yes. Which is different from how he speaks. 
you got to go. Is he talk? Is he talking? Did he talk these out? And were they recorded? I inserted some of things from his memoir, but mm -hmm. then I embellished too. No, no, no. I'm asking: was his memoir a written document or was it an oral? It was oral. Yes. Yeah. So he so told his so story to someone home. else, who I guess. Oh. This was. Um, let me see. His name is Buck Clayton mm -hmm. with the Basie Band, mm -hmm. and I love him. Mm -hmm. And. Um, told to Nancy Miller Elliott. Mm -hmm. Who is that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe, and maybe you could find, you see, are you familiar with the WPA project where the, where there were all these legions of awesome yes. uh, writers who went around and, and collected the slave narratives? Predominantly white people, well-meaning and, and learned, went around through the South and collected slave narratives. If they hadn't done it, we wouldn't have probably all this wonderful material, right? But the material is comes through an ear that is perhaps not, you see what I mean? So find yes. out who that is because people writing down what other people say, it, it like, like if I'm writing down what you say, it's gonna go through my ear and I'm gonna write it down, which is always why I tend to repeat questions to make sure that I understand what you said. You see? So mm -hmm. you're writing things down the way he spoke. It's the way perhaps that it was written down. I'm when yeah. I did Porgy and Bess, people say, oh, that's how they spoke. People wrote, not necessarily. Right. So you got to go beneath, you got to go deeper. That's what I'm saying when you got to go there, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying? So you're writing, yeah. his voice is the voice from his memoir. And yes. Then, and the Southern guy, you got to go there too. You got to really go there. We can't, you know, yeah. we, we don't, you know. The hurler of epithets. What else does he do for crying out loud? Does he have oh, he, he's he, he, he no, he's considered a uh, the white guy is considered a criminal element. <laughs> okay, okay. He okay. owns a bunch of CD CD bars and stuff. Okay, okay, cool. All right, you know, round him out too, though. You know, you said that he's the least sculpted of your three characters. You know, yes. you want it. You want to give him maximum time of day also you know what i mean because that because mm -hmm. because giving short changing any of your characters i'm pretending now there are only three characters in your play which may or may not be true but short changing any of those characters is what makes it seem eh. you know yeah you know what i mean so you really got to go there i mean yeah i went yeah i went in the heart mind and soul of the dog yeah i didn't short change a dog you know, I didn't shortchange the colonel. I love the colonel. People didn't get yeah. why I love the colonel, the white, yeah. the, the white guy. People, I was like sitting in rehearsal. Everything the colonel says, I love. People like look at me like, what? I'm like, yeah. because I go there. I see. So you got it. You got to just continue to go there. Every character is well-rounded, fleshed out, loved by you. Yes. If you can say at the end of the day, every character in my play, I love every single character. Yeah. No. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks okay. everyone. Yeah. I really am grateful. Thank great you. Person. Thank you. All right. It's six oh two. This is like a fierce one, man. Yeah. That's because Tony was on yesterday. We're like, yeah. Everybody's like, We're yeah. Up. yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, SLP, thank you for another great week. You're the best. Yeah. Thank. You. Well, you're the best. You guys are the best. This is wonderful and gives me great joy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so next week, as a reminder, we'll have all those links up tomorrow at 3 p.m. for you to sign up for our Monday through Thursday, 5 p.m. classes. And we'll have a couple of guests next week, too. Yay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye. Oh, thank you for the heart. <laughs> thank you. Thanks.